Aloha, Aloha stickies. stickies. Welcome back to another episode of the Stick with Kaji podcast. I'm Luann. I'm Sean. And today, you know it is anything different? Different location. We thought we'd try something else out, you know, because we're tired of filming in our kitchen. And this <laughs> is not a random place. This is actually our new studio patio. Yeah, so we're going to probably film for the next couple of episodes here and test it out to see if we like it or not. So... Yeah, if you like it, give us a big thumbs up. If not, still give us a big thumbs up. You can follow me on Instagram here at Loan Kaji. And uh, what did we forgot today? We forgot our sticks. So since, you know, we came to this studio house and then I thought we got everything down, mic and cameras and lights. And we forgot the most important thing, our sticks. Sorry. I don't know. This is a stick. It's like a scissor. <laughs> So let's stick to today's topic. It is all the jobs we had before YouTube. Basically, mainly our high oh, school jobs. Yeah, part-time jobs, right? True, part-time jobs because we were still in school in high school or college, you know. And you guys may have already known that you know, Loane used to be a teacher, a high school teacher, and I used to be a structural engineer. So that part, I think many people know, but... You guys don't know what part-time jobs we used to have when we were back in students. Right. What was life before being a high school teacher? And there are so many random part-time jobs that we've done, so you'll find out. This is really random, but Sean has something on his nose. I'm going to just tell him to... <laughs> you couldn't just cut it? It <laughs> sounds like it's a part of this thing. It is. You don't have to cut it. It's fine. <laughs> is it gone? Yep, it's gone. Okay. Yay! Okay. So, anyways, back to today's topic. I'll let Sean start first. Ooh. Take us back to the beginning. What was your first job? So, I think I was 15 uh -huh. or 16. I was working um, as a tutor at the, this uh, place called Kumon. Yeah, everybody knows it. Yeah, right? A lot, there are many locations in the U.S. and then especially in Japan too, Kumon. I used to go to Kumon when I was little too. They give you a uh, worksheet and kids just independently just uh, solving the problems after problem. And, you know, a lot of times tutors there to, to uh, score and, and check the answers. And then if they don't get it, then I teach them. But so I was working there for like two years. How was the atmosphere there among the students and the parents? It's pretty laid back, but then there are some students that are very, very smart. A lot of times in, in when you do the math, you always tell the students, hey, you have to do the, uh, you have to show the work, right? And I had the same issue. I always just kind of solve in the, in the head and Ryan too, right? Ryan always just likes to do it in the head. Yeah, Ryan, he thinks so fast. He doesn't like to show work because in his mind, He's saying that he already knows what 23 times 59 is. So why does he have to show his process? And most of the time, he actually gets it right. So hard to blame him. I know. There's some students, they don't show the work, right? And yeah. I, I, you can't solve this. There's no way you can you know, so, solve this without showing the work. And I check the answer, and then it's right. It's hard to convince those kids that you know, the, showing the work is important. Um, and some kids, they do math in their heads so much faster. Right. Then other kids, it's faster than even me. <laughs> so I was like, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you tell me your thoughts, hold on, hold on. Let me write it down because I have to just write it down and then just, oh yeah, mm -hmm, that's right. So maybe they should have tutored you? No. I'm no. <laughs> just kidding. They just think faster than me. Right, yeah. But how is the parent, you know? Are they usually pushy? Like, you, my son needs to learn this. Are they just pretty chill and laid back too? Uh, it depends on the parents. Yeah, there's some parents really strict, right? And they, they seem very upset when their kid got a few problems wrong. Mm -hmm. And just look like, oh, man, he's going to have a hard time when he come back home. <laughs> so I feel bad sometimes just sending the kids back home after getting a bad grade. But uh, yeah, I mean, some parents are more understanding that, oh, it's okay. There is process for learning. So yeah. Right. Um, not only teaching math, but it, our location was teaching also Japanese, too. Oh. Yeah. So there was some Japanese worksheet, too, a along with the math. So it's mainly math and Japanese. Yeah, and and uh, yeah, and English. But there was no way for me to teach them <laughs> English, so. Well, that's really cool. I've never been to Kumon. I mean, not that I was smart or anything. It's just, you know, it costs money to go mm -hmm. to those places. And, you know, my parents didn't have that kind of extra funding to do it so how long did you stay there so i was working there for I th i'd say two years oh wow yeah but there are a couple other jobs i had in addition to that during the high school 
So I was working there, and then, you know, it's only like a one or two days. Yeah. And during my high school time, I didn't have that many friends. There's, you know, I've never been really invited to the party or anything. Well, you just came over right. from Japan, you know? It's hard to just make friends right away, especially when you don't even know the language and the custom and culture. Yeah, but then when I was like, you know, like in middle school or high school and I watched American Pie, I was like, oh, American students, they all have party <laughs> every single week. And then here I am, and now I'm up to U.S. And I was like, oh. <laughs> It's nothing going on. I'm bored at home. So I started like looking for more part time jobs so I can kind of fill in my you know, free time. In addition to a uh, Kumon, I also work at the uh, Kroger's. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, not Kroger. It's a land, uh, laundry, is the name of the uh, supermarket. Okay, I don't have that where I'm from. So yeah. it's like Kroger's. Correct. So yeah. it's a grocery store. Yeah, it's a grocery store. I was working as a cashier. And let me tell you, being able to work as a cashier at the supermarket is very difficult. They have intensive two, three days of tests. So you have to memorize all the code, right? When you purchase vegetables or fruit, you have to know right away. And sometimes when you buy some vegetables, there's no code on there. So is that why? Oh, yeah. A lot of times, it, yeah, there's no code on it. So you have to memorize it. So there is a software that tests you, tests you make sure you memorize all the code. And, well, it was really tough to pass it because I was like, is this lettuce or, 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 or cabbage? I can't tell looking at it. Right. Is this zucchini or, or cucumber? Or English cucumber is definitely code too. So right. uh, that was the, that was the t toughest part of uh, uh, working as a uh, cashier. There's so many different type of apples too. Yes. So. Is this Fiji apple or like honeydew apple? <laughs> like I can't tell. Sometimes I take a guess. <laughs> take I a like, guess? <laughs> I was like, there's no way between <laughs> apple to apple much price difference there is a humongous price difference though in some of the apples i was like oh that looks like this kind of apple no, some apples are 50 cents and then some apples are 2.99 okay just give me a break it was really hard okay <laughs> people lining up behind them and i can't tell if it's organic or not organic <laughs> it happens okay and i was in high school so right so now you know always check the receipts so at Landry's, your job is the cashier. You never had to stock or anything like that. No, I don't remember. Yeah, no, 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 no. That just that's that. And there's some other easier job than cashier too. You can be a, just a bagger. Oh, right. Yeah, it's, it's pretty easy. Do you get paid the same? Do you know? I don't remember. I don't even remember how much I was getting I'm paid. assuming minimum wage during that time, I'm assuming. Yeah, and especially a high school student too. <laughs> And again, it was how many years ago? Like over uh, close to 20 years ago. So oof, that's long ago. Yeah. <laughs> Minimum wage back in Texas was less than $10, just for sure. If it's over $10, we get excited. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I think it's around, I can't remember, 6 or $7 or 5 5 like to $7. Four, I'd say 4 or $5. Really? The minimum wage. I can't remember. I was above minimum wage. <laughs> Baller. <laughs> but that's just one of, uh, one other job. Yeah. At the same time, I was also working at the... Uh, um, the same time? So this is oh, oh. Kumon, and then the grocery store, and right. then this. Around, at, at the same time. Exactly. Same timeline. Okay. Uh, I was also working at the uh, buffet restaurant. Ooh. Yeah, it's like an Asian buffet restaurant. Has the Korean food, Chinese food, Japanese food. Yummy. All together. Do they give you a discount, I'm assuming? Yeah, it's like a half price off. I was like, really? I can't just... Get the, the free <laughs> meal. It's a buffet for sake, but no, I have to pay for it. I mean, there's always food left over, right? After at the at the end of the day. Well, for the uh, the uh, the health uh, issue, they have to throw it away. Right. So instead of throwing it away, they could have just gave to their employees. That's you know? what I thought, dude. I told the owner, like, "Can't you just throw it throw it away in, into my <laughs> mouth?" But they said, "No, they can't do that." Oh, because when Cause I they, ha they they don't want to be reliable for the uh, uh, you know if you get the food poisoning. Oh, or. I see. Got it. Because back then when I was younger, my mom had a friend who used to work for a Popeyes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at the end of every night, she would bring all these leftover Popeye's food to us. Yeah. So I just assume that all the restaurants that you do that. You know, there are a couple of interesting, like, uh, stories when I was working at those places, uh, especially the buffet restaurant. So every now and then, their unique customers comes. And there's one time on Thanksgiving <laughs> Day, for some reason, we were open that day <laughs> until, until, until the, uh, the lunch time was over. And this customer came and looks like he didn't have any money. He looked a little bit homeless. Yeah. But, you know, I put him into the uh, seat and then he was eating for like a couple hours. And when I was ready for him to pay, he just stood up and came to the cashier and he said, Hey, you know what? I'll be honest. I I'm a proud man. 
I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I have no money. Aww. It's a Thanksgiving. I want to eat some nice food. Aww. Can you blame him? And then he said he doesn't mind going to the jail because they serve some free food too. So he was like, why don't you guys call the c c police and then turn me in. So we, we did call the police and turn him in. But I was like, oh my gosh. People Aww. just prefer doing yeah. that. Uh, I guess he had no other way to eat nice food on Thanksgiving. So I guess that's what he did. But yeah. Those kind of experiences, I, I just, it was just new to me. I was growing up in a pretty good neighborhood. So I just that side of America, I'd never seen before. So it was kind of an uh, interesting experience for me. Um, didn't never have to handle that kind of situation. So Wow, that's kind of sad yeah. to think about. Because he's alone on Thanksgiving, right? So he didn't have any food and he'd rather just take his chance. Right, but then that's a becoming an issue with the buffet restaurant because a lot of buffet restaurant people just come and then just oh, not pay. So what happens if you usually don't pay? Do you do you guys usually call the police? Is that the procedure? I, I'm not sure. I think it's case by case. If it just kind of that person keep coming back and do it, then we, we call police. And that person I think did multiple times. Oh, I see. Um, but yeah, so that 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 was uh, kind of new experience for me back then. And high school student dealing that it was just. A little bit scary too. You know? So you guys had to do. You guys didn't have to just call your manager. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. manager was there, but then you know, I, I have to be also be there too. Right, because it was your customer. Yeah, yeah. Other thing was the a uh, lot of people like see me at the different location working, <laughs> working at different locations. So my student at the Kumon see me at the supermarket working there as a cashier and also working at the uh, the restaurant too. <laughs> so. This uh, this boy, my student, was uh, pointing at me and saying, "Yeah, that that person's working everywhere." <laughs> <laughs> and the, his parents were like, "No, no, don't say that to him. <laughs> he might not have money or something." So, I kind of hear that from behind me. But wow, you're such a hard worker. Yeah, I think it was just fun, just getting out of the house and just uh, uh, seeing new people. So, any anywhere else you work in high school? High school, I think that's it. That's it. Those three places. Okay, so my story is not as interesting as Sean. So in high school, in I believe in 11th grade is when I started my first job. Mm -hmm. I took a co-op. Do you know what that is? Co-op, yeah, yeah, yeah. So a class, if you guys don't know. Do, they, do you guys get paid for it? Well, it's just a class. So basically, um, you have to go and get your own job. Oh, and then you get paid still. Right, from the job. Uh -huh. So it's just a class where it helps you manage with your finance, you know, help you do your resume and help you uh, learn about stocks, you know. Uh -huh. So it's well, just a, cool. yeah, just a class. But in order to stay in the class and get credit, you have to have a job on the side. So you get paid and you get credit and that's a part of the class. That's right. Perfect. Basically, you um, you go to school, you know, just like a regular school. But then you leave around 12 p.m. and then you go to work. Gotcha. So, you know, I was really shy. I'm a really shy person. So, you know, when I joined the class, you know, I didn't really have much money growing up. So I thought this is a perfect opportunity to just, you know, get out there and learn about the world and get up my first job. I was so shy. I think the first week my co-op teacher had to come in and say, Loann, um, you have to get a job <laughs> to stay in this class. Mm -hmm. And I said, I've been trying, you know, I go to the mall, right? Oh, to so try so to applying and preparing to get a job is also part of the class. Right. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, so I said, I've been trying, you know, I go to all the stores in the mall. I sent on my resume and nobody had called me back. And so she said, you have to try harder, you know, instead of just giving out your resume, maybe you want to go in and say, hey, I want to talk to a manager and introduce yourself. Dang. <laughs> and I was really that's shy. A, that's a pretty bold move. The store that I wanted to try that approach was a store in the mall called Kirtland. Have you ever heard of it? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Is that the one that they sell uh, those birthday cards and that's Hallmark. Okay, I don't know what that <laughs> is. So Kirtland's is a home decor store. Okay, so I was close. <laughs> but it's usually catered towards older generational folks. You know, I <laughs> love it. But I was in high school, right? That might be good because it's slower pace, right? You know, the customers too. They talk, you know, talk, talk to you and, and pay slower. So you don't get nervous about, oh, I got to do this fast, fast, fast. Right. But another reason why I picked that, because I was really shy and nervous, and I didn't want anybody from my high school going in 
and say, oh, you work at this place and stuff like that. And oh, so, so you must be a cool kid. No, I wasn't at all. I didn't have any friends at all, but I just was really shy. So I thought I find a place where nobody <laughs> recognized me. You know what I mean? <laughs> And so, yeah, that's my first job there. Um, the manager was really nice. I, you know, when she interviewed me, I, I only probably just say yes or no question. <laughs> you know, she asked me a question. Mm-hmm. I just say yes or no or thank you. <laughs> you know, I try to be polite, but I didn't elaborate, you know, like I should. But good thing she gave me a chance. So, I mean, there's really not much story to Kirtland's. It's just that, <laughs> you know, I just try to cater towards older demographics. Have you ever had like a good customer or mean customer? No, they're all really nice. They're oh. mainly like my grandma <laughs> or something, you know. But the thing is, because I was a high school student, I didn't really know that much about home decor. So they do ask you, mm. you know, what is your opinion on this display versus that display and i did try to give them my honest opinion but <laughs> you know like i don't know what their house looked like and i don't know if it goes with decor or not mm-hmm. so it was kind of hard for me and also i'm short right so a lot of time they would ask me hey this this i want this but in a different color do you have that and so i would have to go to the back and check and a lot of time the items are really high on the shelf And so I try, there's a ladder, but even with the ladder, I can only reach so much. (laughs) And so I always have to ask my coworker or the manager for help. And even then I was pretty shy, but. (laughs) (laughs) And then too, because um, I wanted, you know, because I was in high school. So this is my first job, right? I wanted to make money. Oh, and and it's just like a job. So you do work on the weekend too, you know, if they put you down and schedule down for the weekend, Uh you still work. But a lot of time, I would just skip lunch because... <laughs> During the weekend? Right. Yeah. Because, you know, that's an extra 30 minutes that I could work and get paid instead of taking lunch. And then that's like 2 $3 off of my paycheck. Oh, I thought it's kind of part of the uh, kind of requirement. You have to have a lunch if I, you work all day. I thought so too, but yeah. the manager never, you know, asked me to. You uh-huh. know, she's always say it's a preference. So she'll uh-huh. schedule me from nine to five yeah. you know and then at five i clock out i always debate with among myself do i want to take that lunch break or not that's an extra few dollars you know <laughs> it, it adds up you know at the end of you get paid every two weeks right so at the end of the two weeks it adds up you know but yeah so that was my first job and then um during that time i was interested in the medical field a little bit and so my mom was saying you know, maybe you should find a different job that you can gain more experience and understand how, you know, the medical world work. And so the next job that I tried to apply for was just at the doctor's office. Oh, nice. Again, I don't have any exciting stories or anything like that. Were you like uh, the person at the reception desk? Yeah, yeah, I was just at the reception, you know, answering calls, you know, scheduling appointment, take co-pays, you know. Gotcha. So. Must be tough because you know some people bring in the insurance and they might not covering the uh, um, you know that location. Then they'll probably have to you have to check in, right? You have to call the insurance company, make sure it covers. Right. So those things you you were doing it. Yes, I was. I was really shy, but <laughs> I you know I did it. Um, and then I mean a lot of them you know they, they would tell me right away. They say I don't have insurance or self pay, you know, or a lot of time their doctors just say well. If they say they have insurance but it doesn't cover, we'll just bill them later, you know? So, yeah, so that was my uh, second job. And then after that, uh, still, during that time, it was a part-time job, right? And so I wanted more money, you know, because they only scheduled me a certain amount of hours. Uh So next door to the doctor's office was a pharmacy. Uh So then I applied there too. So I was working both at the doctor's office and the pharmacy for uh, the same time for a little while. Oh, nice, nice. But, you know, in addition to just being the reception, you do have to clean up, you know, and I always, and there's like a schedule sheet on what day, which, which person clean up. And I always get nervous every time it was my day because you have to go in and like clean the restroom and you know sometimes it's not the cleanest you know i'm not saying that i'm not doing a good job but i'm saying that when you go in 
it the restroom like is dirty. Yeah, it looks like it's like it's some explosion <laughs> happening in the right. restroom. <laughs> That's pretty much all my job in high school. Not as exciting as Sean or anything. What kind of part-time job you wanted to get when you were in high school? Not might not be your dream part-time job back in high school. What would have been like your dream job as a high school student? I don't know. I was pretty happy with my reception job to be oh, honest really? yeah i always wanted to work at the starbucks when I, I was in high school i thought those are like a cool kid yeah who works at the starbucks do starbucks hire high school kids because and whenever oh. time i think about starbucks i always imagine like high cost college, college yeah. students or uh yeah or like any coffee shops you know being able to make coffee talking to customers i thought that's like that's like a, like right. it looks like a bartender but then it's serving just only coffee so i thought it was cool did job. you ever try to apply yeah, I tried to. I think I applied. I tried to apply at many places, I, and I just didn't get a job. But yeah, I mean, uh, I also wanted to work at the uh, movie theater too. Oh, I'm so glad you don't. I'm sorry for people who work at the movie theater, but I had a friend who did, and afterwards, you smell like popcorn all over. But yeah, it's, that's only if you're selling popcorn, right? If you're just <laughs> true, true. You're right. You're right. Yeah, you know, there are many other pl- person, you know, like doing like other things besides selling popcorn. So. Right. But it's always like you want to hang out afterwards, and I'm always like, oh, you gonna go home and shower, <laughs> change before we <laughs> hang okay, out. Okay, that, that sounds like uh, from experience. <laughs> <laughs> Was that it for high school? Actually, there's one more thing. I used to work at the Cinnabon. Ooh. Oh, yeah, you did tell me about that. Yeah, so Cinnabons, if you wanna give us a sponsorship video <laughs> deals. Bring them in. So you, do I you still s- probably remember how to make cinnamon rolls. Yummy. Really? Yeah. What's the process? Guide us through the process of so a cinnamon a roll. There's a dough in the sh- like it comes in with a sheet, right? Is it frozen? I think you. It's. I think it comes in frozen, and then okay. you know, uh, for the day, like you just defrost it, and then it's like a sheet of the dough, right? Mm-hmm. And then put the uh, uh, cinnamon powder all over it, and then start rolling, right? Okay. Once you roll it up, and then you just chop it off. And then that's the, uh, and, and each piece is the that cinnamon roll. Ah, and then you just bake it. No, no, before that, you oh. have to uh, develop it, right? Develop? Oh, you have to leave the, it the out. yeast, right? right? Yeah. So you have to make the yeast, so you fluffen up. So that, so you have to put in a chamber. It's like all like steam. It's very like moist. And you put it in there for like a, a few hours. And a lot of times I forget to take it out. What? It looks like, it just looks like it's a manifest of the, uh, uh, of the bread. Because it expands so much. Uh-huh. Wait, but this is when you already cut into the Small piece, piece. yeah. And then it's still expand that much. Yeah. Oh, I was wow. like, oh my gosh, I forgot to, <laughs> to, to take it out. <laughs> and I still bake it. It still come out somehow okay. So I was just surprised. <laughs> there was like a little like guiding sheet, like how long you cook it for, how long you're supposed to put it for each, uh, each uh, uh, phase. Yeah. Sometimes I forget it and it still comes out okay. So I was like, huh. And you still sell those? Yeah. If people buy them, people, so if they're I, buying giant size wow. cinnamon, cinnamon. Yeah, they like, oh, good deal. <laughs> so you're still <laughs> selling it for the same price, basically. Yeah, I was surprised how much it gets <laughs> bigger, you know. I wonder if it tastes any different. I don't know. I tasted it and I couldn't tell the difference. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you guys should sell giant size cinnamon. Uh-huh. That would be good. But then probably a lot of calories, too. So, does it, wait, if it's bigger... So it should has more calories, right? No. Or no, or it's the same it's quantity. It's from the same, yeah. It's from the same dough amount of dough. So I think I'm assuming it's. Oh, well then. <laughs> I bet they taste different. Back then in high school, I'm not really picky on the food, so. Oh, true. true. For me, as bigger the better. So. So that concludes. Good. That concludes our job in high school. Now let's go to college phase. Mm-hmm. Okay. Any jobs in college? Uh, I did several different jobs. Um, let's see. I worked as a librarian at the oh. school library. Yeah. I think you mentioned that. And it was super, super easy job. <laughs> All I had to do is just to fetch the book in oh. this giant library. Right. So they gave me a list of books that I'm supposed to search. And Wait, how, are you getting, to the how are you getting the list? Oh, it's like the, it maybe the, the uh, compiled list of the, uh, um, you know, those people who's requesting to get those books. So I just go and I just get those lists and I just look for it around the library and then just find it and then just stack it up. Oh, and then you just give it. 
Yeah, that's and then the reverse, like all those are returned back. So I just put it back to where it's supposed to be. Oh, and that's all you did. Yep, that's all I did. And it's in campus, so like maybe I can just do it like a few hours in between class. All or, right. Or and the library opens late in the night, which is super nice because yeah. night night time. Then I was just okay. I'm gonna go look for a book. I can spend just an extra couple minutes, just, and then just and then walk up one extra little lap <laughs> before I go back to the front. <laughs> And it's nice and quiet. Not many people come. A lot of people just come to study uh -huh. at night time during uh, and, and at the library. So it was really easy for me. Oh, nice! That's like a dream job for the students. <laughs> but it gets paid really. <laughs> I'm low, sure because all you do is fetch books and like, you know put it back. I feel like it was like a six or seven dollars. So, is that minimum wage too? Then I don't remember. Yeah, so it was pretty pretty low price. I would say the longest job I ever had when I was in uh, in college was uh, uh, working as a sushi restaurant. Oh, the one where I met you. Right. Right. Well, you didn't meet me there. But well, I didn't meet him at the restaurant, but while I met him, he was working at a restaurant. Right. Um, it's called Ohana. Yeah. Not family in Hawaiian. <laughs> Just Ohana in Japanese means uh, flower. Right. Uh, so yeah, that's where I was working at. It's a uh, teppanyaki style, so it's like a hot iron plate, and then the teppanyaki chef it just uh, cooks in front of people and do choo choo train, <laughs> <laughs> flying, choo choo, <laughs> flying <laughs> egg, <Yeah. laughs> those things. Uh, so I was working there uh, as a server, so not not the uh, chef or anything. I made pretty good money because you know from tips, right? Right, right. Yeah, servers get uh, paid through the tips, and it's interesting because. The, the wage that I get from the restaurant itself is like $2. Right. Well, less than $2. So it's below minimum wage, but then for servers, you know, it's a, the restaurant is allowed to pay below minimum wage because they get, you know, they get tips. I think you have to be a server to appreciate it or any sort of job that gets tips to appreciate it because now Sean tips really well. Yeah. It's yeah. because you learn from experience, right? You know what it's like to be a server. Yeah, it makes a day of, you know, for servers if they get a good tip and then uh, you'd be surprised how many customers actually come in and don't tip. Even though you just do everything yeah. perfectly, they expect the food to be, you know, uh, cheaper because it's Asian food. But then, you know, a lot of times in, you know, where we uh, where we used to go to school, it's Lubbock, and a lot of people never been to Japanese restaurants before, and they their expectations, oh, it's like a, a fast food Chinese restaurant. Is their expectation when they go to like our restaurant sometimes? So they but you tip there too, don't you? Yeah, yeah but then you know. They don't have money to tip because uh, they right. thought they're gonna spend only ten dollars, and then they, you know, we have we serve sushi and we have other stuff, so it comes out to be like forty, fifty dollars, and then they're like, oh, I don't have money to pay tip. I'm sorry, you know, you guys already made mo enough money, so uh, no tip. Right. I think they just don't understand that you know the people working there rely on tip as part of their income. Yeah, some people are just straight mean. So there's a couple of times I got like saying, "Let me see, aha, no, no tip this time for you." What? Seriously? And they just write a message to me. Oh, this person, he <laughs> gave me a tip, but in such a difficult way. So he drank the uh, so much bottle of uh, wine and, and beer. He put my cash tips inside the <gasps> empty beer bottle. He was like, well, if you want it, come get it kind of thing. And then he What? Left. How did you get it out? Did you just break the beer bottle? Yeah, I put it inside the trash bag and then broke Aww. it. But it's kind of sad after everybody's cleaning up and still have more things to do after you know, the store is closed. Right. Just doing that and then just taking it out. And I found that it was only a dollar. So oh, <laughs> people are so mean. <laughs> but I still, overall, still the mo uh, you know, more money yeah. back then. But when it was good, like when it was this big party, you know, I was able to... Right. Get a really good tip. I remember when you were working at that restaurant, you said the most expensive thing was called like the sushi boat or love boat or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it was $100, you think? Yeah, yeah. So because I work there, I get a little bit of discount, not that much, right? And uh, I take, I have taken Loan to the date, you know, just me and Loan to the, 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 the restaurant that I worked at. And uh, what I asked him to do is <laughs> I don't have money. Even with a discount to, to buy a sushi boat, can you just put regular sushi on top of the boat? <laughs> and then that's what they're phoning me because, uh, you know, they know me for a long right. time. So. <laughs> well, it was still good. I, I, I was still very impressed and felt very special because <laughs> it was on this, this plate that looks like a bowl. So it still looks super fancy. Right, right.
Uh, I still sometimes like, when it's busy, it's so busy that it's just I cannot really forget about the uh, uh, the customers that day. I dream about it too. Oh wow! Because there's so many orders and they they get drunk and then they just forget what they order and just oh my gosh! In my dream, I was, oh my god, I forgot to bring out this food to this customer and then it was yeah, just dream. So right. I'm sure a lot of servers, a lot of, uh, a lot of waiters, they have that kind of nightmare. I don't think it's just pertain to server because, you know, even now, I still get dream of me being a teacher. Oh, really? I would wake up and, you know, be like, oh, I got, I got to grade some test papers, or <laughs> you know, like, no? <laughs> uh, me working as an engineer, I think, it, no, I don't have any uh, like nightmare or anything. I, I do <laughs> have a nightmare of... Uh, like uh, forgetting to design something or making mistake. Oh, that's, that's the always, worst. Yeah. No, no, the worst thing is that when I dream about it is uh, I notice my mistake after the building is completed. Oh, <laughs> That's the worst yeah, feeling, right? Yeah, yeah. You see that it's completed and then and looking at the plan, like, oh my gosh, I made a mistake. I forgot to include this. <laughs> to clarify, that's a that dream. That never happened. That's a dream. <laughs> that's a dream. <laughs> Got it. Disclaimer that this is just a dream. <laughs> right, because the building could collapse, right? If you make... No, no, you'd be surprised. No, no, no. There, there are code. Building code allows a certain level of a mistakes. The ah. building still stands. That's why there's a building code for each city. This, uh, the re uh, city requires this this building code, minimum building code, just so it, just in case there's some mistake in design, the building still uh, stands still and safe. So there's room for error. Right. Because everybody make a mistake on designing buildings. I can tell. There's so many steps, right? Designing phase, maybe somebody make a mistake building construction phase maybe somebody forget to do right. certain things so there's but a mistake but don't you guys have manager to oversee and check that yeah but there's so many things going on and then you know it's not just structural engineer design the building right they also mechanical engineer electrical engineer architect there's so many people working the same project there's some miscommunication happen so there's always there's no way there's any project out there without done without uh, any mistakes so comforting to know <laughs> <laughs> is that all the jobs in college itself um no i was also working uh, as a, a student researcher what is that oh have i heard about this student re yeah yeah i was working oh. as a student researcher and uh, uh designing like a wind tunnel oh i don't remember this i'm sorry i probably just have a very bad memory and to be honest, it was so complicated. I don't know how to explain it either. So I was like, <laughs> so you were I just was just designing the wind tunnel with uh -huh. the uh, AutoCAD. So oh. it's like a design software. And, so you and were researching? Simulate the flow of the wind oh, and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but just a student researcher. So a lot of times, like I'm getting the the data, right? And uh, you know, um, simulation, doing the simulation, getting data, and give it to the uh, professor. I don't really know what those numbers represent. Like uh, what's significant of it. Yeah. So I, uh, I'm just a data collector. So. Oh, got it. <laughs> if you ask me what was the significance of it, I, I have no clue. So you're just plotting, like putting in well, the data. Well, design the physical model uh -huh. and then, you know, just do the run the simulation. But and you don't know what the simulation well, I don't know represent. what. Yeah, I don't know what the professor used after that point. Got it. <laughs> That's still a fun experience. Yeah, yeah, it's fun experience, you know, and... Uh, yeah, that made me more and more into the uh, being engineer. So I think that that was cool experience. And it now, now you know, just it nowadays more so too. It's just hard for students to get internship with that kind of experience. You know, right? Any opportunity you get, you just, whether it's get paid or non non pay, you should take it. So, so that's another uh, uh, job that I did. Oh, and <laughs> I also more. Yeah, sorry. In college, I worked a lot too. I used to work at, this is simultaneously, during the summertime when I went back to Austin, just short period of time during the summer, I was working at the Radio Shack. Right. Do you guys remember Radio Shack? Radio Shack or Radio Shock? Radio Shock? Radio Shack, right? Radio Shack, okay. I don't know if I ever went there to Radio Shack before. Yeah, it's pretty sad. It was also during the downfall too. So I Aww. see the store slowly, slowly scaling back on the selling uh, multiple things. So it's mainly older people go there, right? It's pretty sad. Yeah. I'm selling the uh, cell phone to the older people. Mm -hmm. They're saying like, Oh, you should get this insurance. Oh, you should get this also. Do they need it or not? I'm not sure. Because you guys get paid on commission, correct? Yeah. Mostly the commission of selling insurance to oh. the product. So every time you buy uh, a game at a GameStop too, right? And they ask you, oh, do you want this insurance? Those are like a little commission. And I it's see. It's like a working as a server at the restaurant too. Like a lot of times that's kind of a contribution to majority of your salary. 
Oh, wow. It's it's kind of sad because it's almost as if somebody's trying to scam you. But then at the same time, you have to think about the other person's perspective because that's how they make their income. Right? Yeah, and then it's, it's insurance is interesting. I'm not lying to you. you know, it's, right. Yeah. So it's, it's really not a scam, I guess. It's more like, yeah, does that sure. person really... I anybody. No, no, no. It's more as if, if that person really need that insurance or not. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. But then as a salesperson, you have to be able to sell it, right? Right. Yeah. And I wasn't good at it, so I didn't really make much money there. <laughs> so I have to have uh, one more job. <laughs> <laughs> <Gosh>. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody at the Radio Shack was making fun of me because I was still using a razor phone. Right. <laughs> and, you know, and back then, already people were using a smartphone. So people like, and when I'm selling the smartphone, we get all the good feature of a smartphone. Oh, it could do this, it do this. And behind me, I can hear my coworkers laughing. It's like, oh yeah, he wouldn't know. He used to, he still used a razor phone. Hey. <laughs> back then, from back there, the, my coworkers go, Sean, why don't you just sell for a razor? You're more familiar with those razor phones. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> <laughs> Remember he's selling it at the uh, pay as you go phone section. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> those are good time. And while I was working at the Radio Shack, I also was uh, working at the uh, uh, this Texas barbecue restaurant called Rudy's. Wow. Right, yeah, we mentioned that in the previous episode. It's the best. It takes barbecue restaurant. I agree. Maybe it's just our taste bud. We don't know. But we tried other local barbecue places before. But it's nothing compared to Rudy's. And the level of customer service is top notch. Right. The, I, what I mean by that is they test you so much. I Even remember, when you start working. I remember you were so nervous when you got that job. You said, oh, you're going to be interviewed. And there's people can come in. And uh, secret shopper sort of yes, position exactly secret shoppers Shh. hired by the uh, the management company so they come in with a secret camera video oh camera my gosh. on their purse i don't know how yeah. they were filming i was like oh this person was filming me <laughs> i had no idea there was a video camera in it uh but yeah so just they, they check and see how you could uh, you know keep the conversation with the customers keep it keep them in entertained while they wait for their meat to come out because once they order, then the, uh, the meat chopper, you know, those people, butchers, they cut the uh, meat, you know, prepare it, and then bring it to the front. So until then, I have to kind of keep the conversation going, you know, talk about the weather, talk about the sports. And I usually just talk about the weather, and then that's where I kind of stop. It's, <laughs> it's because you guys don't know we're not really into sports mm -hmm. on that level to keep up with it. Yeah, a lot of times people talk to me about, oh, yeah, you know, you know what do you think about cowboys? Like, oh, yeah. I like Western movies, and then I think what they mean by that is uh, football. Games. Right, yeah. And I can't tell, like, when people tell me Astros, back then I couldn't tell Astros is like a football team, basketball team, or baseball team. I had no idea. So I just said, oh, yeah, it's a sports team. I, that that far I, I knew, but I wasn't sure which team it was, which right. sports it was. So I had to kind of play along. <laughs> but a lot of times I got in trouble because I just kind of keep it quiet. I just, after talking about weather, I just no other topics right so when the secret chopper comes in and film people do you guys have to go back with the manager later on and kind of review the footage and yes you watch it with with the manager it's super embarrassing <laughs> so the manager would tell you what you did right what you did wrong how uh -huh. you could improve yeah and you also like they like lines and lines that you have to say right i Welcome remember yeah this. have you been here before oh you haven't and you know just there's I a remember you catchphrase. They say that's the branding. It's just, yeah. just the cashiers, uh, you know, those like welcoming catchphrase. And I always forget it. I remember you would bring home. Well, on the phone, we were, we were, you were in Austin. I was in Houston during that summer. And I remember you on the phone. You were telling me they gave you a manual. Yeah. Is that where all the catchphrases yes. and stuff? And all the information about the meat. Uh, sometimes I notice that's a secret shopper, right? How? Sometimes I just, I just see. Oh, looks like she's positioning. <laughs> <laughs> looks a little bit <laughs> awkward so yeah. i just noticed that person was secret shopper that put me even extra nervous <laughs> so as I, I was grabbing you know when you grab the meat you grab it with a sheet of the paper right on, on a barbecue and then trying to bring it to to show it the customer i tried to do everything fast because they also check that too I, I turned fast too fast that the meat launched off the paper it got onto the customer oh no and that's the one that it was secret shopper so. oh no well it's hard you know when you know you're being filmed secretly like that you get nervous and tense up i would have froze up i wouldn't know what to do yeah it'll be a good youtube content but <laughs> not to work there 
And I have to always uh, scream too. Every time there's an order, then I have to scream to the butchers. Right. If there's like a moist brisket, one pound, pound moist, <laughs> one link of sausage, I have to scream right. really loud. Uh, but that was fun. That got me really into Texas barbecue. I don't know how to cook it still, but I like eating it. Me too. I love Texas barbecue. Yummy. We actually haven't tried barbecue in Hawaii yet. I wonder, maybe we have a higher standard. I'm sorry, but we actually haven't tried. We really should try Hawaii, Texas version of, you know, <laughs> Two barbecue. <states> in <laughs> yeah. Hawaiian, Texan barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> we should try. I'll we'll let you know how it compares to the one in Texas. Is there any other job you have done that's in it. college? That's it. I think that's it. You've done so much because so far I only have mentioned three and I think you mentioned close to like 10 or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any memory as a student, but more like I have more memory of working as a part time <laughs> job. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, it's a you're gaining life experience. So it's it's good. You might not make much money, but <laughs> but I bet nowadays, like you know, college students they have multiple way to to make money, like Uber, right? Right. DoorDash and and, and, sh and what was that? The shopper, like the sh shipped, shipped, and the, uh, yeah, Instacart, right? Those kind of new way of making money, I feel like that gives more variety of jobs for students and right. the flexibility too. Those things, I'm sure, like you can choose your own time and right. hours, right? So, yeah, what a you know, what a really good world now for for the students to to make extra money yeah i wish i could have done ship or something because i you know like i said i was a pretty shy person so with ship you just have to text them again i don't know if people were i'm sure it's hard work too i'm not downplaying it but i'm just thinking about the social aspect i just don't have to talk to real people live you know like i'm more comfortable just texting them and taking pictures and asking them is this a good substitute or not you know i want to work <laughs> as an uber now Oh, really? But I wanted to work as an Uber. Like, oh, sorry, the food delivery. So Uber Eats. Uber Eats or DoorDasher in a, in, in a, um, like a more like a big city with a bicycle. Um, okay, they're never going to get their food. No, like within the city. Like you, you stay at this hotel and you want to eat food like somewhere within the uh -huh. city. Then I can just, you know, like, like, a, like a Waikiki area. You know? Right. But Waikiki is so pretty. So maybe it's good experience. Yeah. yeah. I want to bike Driving it. around. And get some exercise done too with yeah. the bicycling. So. Yeah. I think it's always important to try out those jobs when you can. Because I heard, I think you told me not too long ago, was it Uber Eats that makes their engineer deliver food? Didn't you mention oh, that? Oh, they're software engineers. Yeah. I think it's one of the requirements. Like they have to do a certain amount of delivery each year. And then some engineer was a little bit upset because uh, it wasn't part of the job description when they, uh, you know, when they're hired. But I guess that's, I guess, uh, CEO's a decision of like showing them what's it like to be in the front line of the food delivery business. So when you're the actual person delivering the food, you know, even though that's not your, in your job description, you can kind of see what needs to improve and how you can improve it, you know, through working there as that position, right? Right, right. So I think there is some pros in uh -huh. doing that? Uh, when I was talking to uh, my Uber driver when I was in LA, he said he make, he used to own like a production company, right? And during the COVID, he lost, you know, he lost the company, you know, he, he went bankruptcy and now he's working as an Uber driver. He said he makes more money now than before when he used to own a company. Oh, wow. He said he makes like, close to 100,000. Oh, wow. From just, just Uber driver. Maybe you have to be in a big city, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I think LA is perfect, right, for the Uber drivers. Yeah, and a lot, not a lot of people want to drive around LA because of the traffic and just the way people drive in LA. Like, I feel comfortable driving in Texas growing up, but in LA, I don't think I've ever driven. I think it's either we always take Uber or when we rent a car, it's mainly Sean that drives. Right, right. So for me, I only have one job. So when I started college, I didn't really have a job. But before college, I did take a couple years break in between. So during that couple years break, I, again, not as fun, as exciting as Sean, but I used to just work in a medical billing company. I'm not under the medical one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so basically, it's a medical billing company where it works with multiple doctors, uh -huh. you know. And then uh, basically, we just have to verify insurance. And then when the claim didn't get paid, we will call insurance and ask them why we why this didn't get paid. So if the insurance still refused to pay, then I have to call the uh, the customer, you know, and tell them, um, oh, sorry, it. yeah. That must be a difficult conversation. Right, the, the insurance won't cover it, and then you need to do self-pay. It's a hard conversation, yeah. Oof, it's usually like thousands of dollars sometimes. Right, and because I was working at the medical billing company, I was really surprised and shocked at what they're charging, you know? The oh, amount. Like the procedure right. is such a simple procedure, but the insurance is like covering right. so much, yeah. yeah. But you know, different insurance has a cap of how much they're willing to pay, uh -huh. you know? So some insurance, they'll pay more for the same procedure uh -huh. versus other insurance. The one where it pays the less to, towards the doctor when I was there was, you know, Medi Medicaid and Medicare, they pay less. What about Obamacare? <laughs> I, I didn't have Obamacare when <laughs> I was there, so I can't tell you. <laughs> Even though Medicare and Medicaid pays less, they actually willing to pay like the majority of the procedure they're willing to pay and the claim versus the other insurance I see, so uh -huh. i never really have to call them and fight them on it gotcha so it's good and bad you know but yeah that is it i don't really have any fun and exciting stories you know i just hate calling those insurance people no offense if you're working <laughs> at insurance but sometimes i just have a little difficult time because they would just put you on hold for <laughs> hours you know they're and, hoping you hang up yeah. So that was our job in high school and in college. So let us know if you guys ever worked at any of the jobs we mentioned. Yeah, I wonder what other like exciting part-time job you ever had. I'd like to find out. My dream job was Starbucks and yet to, uh, to grant that wish. So one day in my whole life, I want to work at a st Starbucks. Oh, really? Or any coffee shop. I think local coffee shop would be cool too. Yeah, I want to make a coffee with those like a siphon, you know, like the, the those like classic coffee maker, not th one of those machines. <laughs> not Keurig machine. No, 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 not those. <laughs> I want a good old way, old fashioned way to make coffee. Is it Keurig or Keurig? I don't even know. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. It's not sponsored, so we're gonna say <laughs> however we want it. So before we end the video, of course, we gotta do the sticky, sticky word, word of, of the, the day. day. Since we've been talking about lots of fun jobs we had, the word is... Job. Hey, I'll let Sean go first. Shigoto. Shigoto? Shigoto, yeah. Okay. So if you guys don't know, Sean is Japanese. If this is your first time tuning in, that's how you <laughs> say... Shay, wow. That's how you say job in Japanese. What is it again? Shigoto. Shigoto. Mm -hmm. So I'm Vietnamese. Vietnamese, so the word for job is Gaum Vic. Gom big. Yeah, gom big. Gom is like a, what was it? It's just always you put like. No, that's like gong. Dog. That's different. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, having, <laughs> it's not still sticking with me. Uh, gom means like what? Well, it sounds like a two words. Right. Yeah. Gom big. What does that mean? Gom. The first one. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Gom big. Gaum Vic. Gaum Vic. There you go. And then what was in Japanese again? Shigoto. Shigoto. Got it. So, yeah. Thank you so much for watching this fun episode of the Stick with Pika. La, la, la. Wow. Okay. So, thank you for watching this fun episode of the Stick with Kaji podcast. If you like it, give us a big thumbs up. Subscribe for more fun. We try to post every Saturday unless something comes up. But, yeah. Subscribe. Right. More fun. Bye. See you next week.